Uh, my name is David Brumbaugh. I'm a WordPress core contributor, and I have been a software engineer since 1986, so however many years that is. Uh, I'm a full stack web developer uh, specializing in WordPress, but because of my experience, I've got a full full range of experience, and I'm really enjoying being a mentor, and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you uh, for giving me an opportunity to share something that's very uh I'm very passionate about, and that's WordPress security. I'm going to share my my slideshow. This is a, a variation of a talk that I gave at uh, WordCamps. Uh, this is for WordPress uh, programmers. So if you do any programming of themes or plugins, uh, this is going to help you make sure that your uh, WordPress site is more secure. Uh, the title of the talk is a CIA mindset and the CIA actually determines our course outline. Uh, we're going to be talking about confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Those are the three major aspects of website and web application security. Uh, my name is David Brumbaugh. If you want to uh, contact me for any reason, there's my contact URL. Uh, you can contact me uh, at that location. In October of 2013, Information Week provided an article that said that 70% of WordPress sites were vulnerable. Now, fortunately, the WordPress community has taken that to heart and that number is substantially less. But that's, at the time, that was over 100 million sites. And all of these vulnerabilities were preventable by the developers by using best practices because it was not primarily just the WordPress sites that were vulnerable. And it's because security is a mindset, not a piece of software. And so when you're coding or developing, your uh, WordPress security has to be something that that's in your mind, not just uh, not just something you tack on. And so it should permeate how we code. CIA stands for confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And we're going to address each of those items uh, in this in this talk. Uh, I'm going to cut back to my own face occasionally and also show you some code. Again, if you have any questions uh, and I don't get too quickly, go ahead and unmute your mic. So in WordPress, the CIA uh, coding, we're going to look at environmental factors, uh, how to code for confidentiality, how to code for integrity, and how to code for, uh, for availability. And confidentiality is, you've got things like uh, personal information, like names and your email addresses, uh, customer information, uh, like an order history. And then you also have sensitive information, which is actually uh, sometimes has legal aspects, like payment information, uh, passwords, and health data. And all of this information is at one level or another confidential. And we have both a, uh, a, a moral, ethical, and ethical responsibility, and in cases of uh, payment information and health data, a legal responsibility uh, to keep this information confidential. One of the things to understand about confidentiality is the hosting environment you're working in, because the fact is, if your host is compromised, your coding doesn't matter. And very often the programmer has no control over the host whatsoever. Sometimes if you're a freelance developer, you can make a recommendation. If it's your own website, obviously you can pick your host, but hosting uh, is something that is uh, important and it's in, uh, for developers to cultivate a good relationship. Uh, one of the things that just really irritates users and customers is that when there's a problem, the developer blames the host, the host 
uh, blames the developer, and we want to avoid the blame game. So when I'm contacting a new host or a, a large company host, I usually start the support ticket with, I am a developer. Uh, what that does is that cuts through a lot of the initial qualifying questions that the host support ticket usually asks and it gives the, the host a, uh, and the host support people uh, a better context with, with which to answer your questions. And my experience has been if, uh, if you don't set a bad attitude, most host support people will will work with you, uh, but uh, you also have to be willing to take the blame. If it is your problem, you need to be willing to fix it, and you need to be able to ind indicate that to them. So moving off of the host, uh, confidentiality in WordPress uh, takes two distinct uh, flavors, front end and back end. Uh, that is controlled by something that WordPress calls roles and capabilities. And WordPress has built-in roles and capabilities, and it also allows you to customize your roles and capabilities. So we're going to talk about all of these. Uh, your custom roles and capabilities are often based on business decisions and the purpose of the code. And I'm going to show you what that means uh, a little further, uh, a little further in, and the roles and response, uh, roles and capabilities should match the business responsibilities. So WordPress comes with some standard roles, and these standard roles are based on the fact that WordPress is primarily a publishing platform. You can see that these roles: super administrator, which has to do with networking; administrator, which has to do with any given site. Uh, these are, are very responsible roles that can do everything or almost everything. Uh, an administrator can do everything for a particular site. A super admin can do everything for many sites. The role of an editor, author, contributor, and subscriber are standard publishing terms. And each of these roles has a set of capability. For example, a super administrator can edit users across the, uh, across the multi-site network. An administrator could activate plug-in. Your editor can do things with other people's stuff. Uh, an author might be able to upload files for uh, his or her own posts. A contributor might be able to uh, simply edit a post uh, but uh, and a subscriber uh, might only be able to read. In code, if you're creating a plugin or a theme, you want to use the uh, the function current user can from the WordPress uh, WordPress uh, API. So I'm going to kind of I'm going to paste this into the chat window here. I'm going to stop sharing here. I'm going to paste a couple of URLs in here. If you want to jump over to them, uh, I'll, I'll leave this, this open a little bit, but this, this link will, um, if you want to bookmark that one and this one. And so uh, those, those two URLs uh, will be helpful. And I'm going to start the screen share again. Not sure who was trying to call me, and I apologize for that. Uh, all right, what I need to do is um, share my screen back in here. OK. So the first uh, first link here is an overview of the roles and capabilities. You're going to uh, want to be familiar with this when you are coding, 
with the CIA mi mindset in mind, with the principle being that uh, no one should have access to something that they don't have a valid business reason to have. That's the confidentiality aspect of it. And uh, if you're not familiar, the developer.wordpress.org is your function references. So uh, your, your sample code is if the current user can activate plugins, maybe you've got a function called show plugin options on the theory that if the user can activate the plugin, they should be able to, uh, to play with its options because they, that's a related capability. You also can have custom roles and capabilities that have nothing to do with publishing, but have to do with the purpose of your website, either in your theme or in your plugin. And so maybe you've got a, a plugin that has to do with e-commerce and you've, you've got a, a client that you're creating a custom e-commerce plugin for, and they're gonna have roles. And so one of this, these roles is called a customer service manager. And you'll find out, again, you can find, find these uh, functions uh, linked to in these related resources down here. So you'd be able to go through all these, um, all these articles and, and read what this means. But uh, an administrator, if you're adding a new, uh, a new capability, since an administrator has to be able to do everything, you'll want to add the capability to the administrator of viewing orders. Then you add a new role with a customer service manager who's kind of like a contributor. So they can read anything, they can edit posts, they're not allowed to delete posts, but they can view orders. And this view orders is where they uh, where it comes in. Again, those are, those are business decisions. This is only an example. Inside your action, you'll want to initi initiate that in your admin init and your, uh, that uh, by having custom plugin roles in your admin init, that activates this entire role system. And then inside your plugin, you'd want to say, oh, I apologize. If my, if the current user can view orders, show custom orders. And you might want to have an else after here that says, this isn't available to you. You might, uh, this might be where you'd have your menu or whatever, but you can, again, this is how WordPress handles confidentiality. Uh, some plugins that, that handle uh, confidentiality. One of them is uh, uh, Members by Justin Tadlock. I've, I've set up a, actually that's the wrong site. I've got a different WordPress site. Hang on, let me. I'm gonna kind of show you a, uh, a plugin that will want uh, want to handle WordPress cust uh, roles and capabilities called members. Yeah, let me just see if Oh, okay, this is uh, Members by Justin Tadlock. It is incredibly uh, useful and uh, generic roles and capability system. So it it fits a lot of uh, fits a lot of uh, situations. So rather than it, uh, rather than create your own roles and capability system, you can use this plugin. Uh, you could add a new role, for example, instead of doing it in code, you could go through and have all of these edits and add the capabilities and you could say, uh, 
and then add that role. This thing has short codes where you can uh, you can use your control. You can uh, limit it. Once you've got posts here, you can limit um, limit access to the posts based on uh, author custom fields. I think that's going to give us what we're going to need to see. If you come down here, you can see where you can limit access to the post, for example, to your customer service manager. There's actually a lot that this can do. This is not my, um, the purpose of this function or this lecture is not to uh, teach you how to use it, only to show you that it's there. And another thing is if you want to learn how to use roles and capabilities, this is a great piece of code to just examine since it is open source. Just download it from the repository to learn from. So that's members. This one has gotten old. I have used it. Uh, when I was going through the preparation this morning, I realized it got the uh, unmaintained uh, flag. So this eyes only user access short code. Since it is old, I can't recommend it anymore. But since it's available, uh, I would recommend downloading it, inspecting it, creating your own version of it if you need it. But with this, you can actually wrap individual pieces of content in short codes based on the user, whether it's a group or an, uh, whether the user is part of a group, whether this user is uh, specifically, whether they're logged in. And so you can bury content inside a short code. Again, if you're wanting to code this, this is a great one to download and learn from. Restricted site access. Kind of come over here back to um, restricted site access lets you decide whether or not someone can get to your uh, website based on an IP address. This is great for letting your customers see your site before it's available to the public. Uh, so uh, this, is, this was created by 10up, a company I used to work for. Uh, so you can uh, limit, you know, limit your site during development to a particular set of IP addresses. It's also good for an infranet or yeah, uh, an intranet. So if you want to limit your access to sites within the company. So restricted site access is a great plugin uh, for confidentiality. Another one is editorial access manager also by 10 up. And just your editorial access manager lets you control uh, posts more granularly, uh, whereas WordPress in general allows you to have a uh, an editor can edit anybody else's posts. Uh, editorial access manager would let you have, for example. Uh, a role of a sports editor who could only edit sports related posts. So editorial access manager has a lot of the same functionality as members, but it's managing by roles from a publication standpoint. So that's, that's the confidentiality part of our CIA triad. Uh, before I move on to integrity, uh, do you have any questions?
Uh, okay, sounds good. All right. In that case, I'm going to move on to the next uh, the next thing. I've got to hit the share properly. Hang on. Okay. Integrity is when you protect your site against unauthorized or unintended modification, deletion, or addition of data uh, and or your programs. So WordPress has some very specific integrity threats that are very common out there in the wild. And there are also some very uh, standard ways to defend against them. So WordPress out of the box is pretty secure by uh, defending against these threats but sloppy coding practices and sloppy security practices make them uh, threats. The primary type of uh, threat is brute force attacks. Uh, a brute force attack is when a, another computer guesses your username or password. There's uh, some hosts have some automated WordPress installs and these automated WordPress installs assign without giving you an option assign the administrator username admin and the password to password and there are literally thousands if not millions of bots out there on the web looking for WordPress sites with admin password as the username password combination and that will get get your site compromised faster than anything else. So pick a good username and password. Uh, the other way of brute force attack is when the username or password is intercepted via email. When the username and password are sent in the same email, uh, a man in the middle attack could pick that up. So before I get to uh, that injection attacks are another form of integrity and injection attacks is when another computer exploits a failure to comply with best practices by injecting malicious codes. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the best practices so that when another system tries to inject malicious code, it will fail. So some advantages that WordPress has in core that you don't have in a proprietary system uh, include the, the fact that it's open source, which means there are literally thousands of eyes looking at the WordPress core all the time. And anybody can audit or inspect WordPress core. There, there's no hidden, uh, there's nothing hidden. So if there's something exploitable, uh, Yes, the bad guys can find it, but since there are more good guys than bad guys, uh, the chances of, of a good guy finding an ex or a bad guy finding and exploiting a problem before the good guys find it are substantially thinner. If you're interested in security at all, you should inspect WordPress core. Uh, I have found that that once I get into WordPress core, it's 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 good to inspect, it's good to understand, and it makes it a lot less spooky. Uh, as a core contributor, uh, I've even been allowed to change it and, and have millions of people dealing with my tiny itty bitty change. If you find a problem when you're inspecting it, go to this website. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can I'm not going to be able to copy that, but uh, make wordpress.org slash core slash reports. Uh, it is a solid organization. It is committed to security. I know core committers personally. I know people who look at the security personally. They are passionate about making WordPress secure. Uh, WordPress has a lot of built-in security functions for theme developers and plugin developers, but they only work if they're used. Uh, one of the things that was in response to that 2013 uh, huge security problem were version updates. And so now version updates are automatic for security-related updates. 
and normal updates can and usually should be automated unless you have a good reason not to. Uh, if you have security updates for your own theme or plugin, you should push them uh, either to your clients and or the repositories as quickly as possible so that you're part of the WordPress community uh, dedicated to the security. In your themes and plugins, you, you've got uh, update procedures. Make sure that you, you have them documented. Uh, if you submit to the repository, have the, your procedures for submitting to the repository automated. Use best practices, uh, which include input, validation, and sanitation. I'm going to show you some examples of those. Uh, you need to validate and escape your output. And beware of feature bloat. If your plugin has a purpose, every line of code that is in the plugin has a potential of being a security threat. And so any line of code that doesn't support your plugin's core purpose is potentially a point of vulnerability. So one of your security best practices is also a software engineering best practice, which is every line of code should support the purpose and responsibility of the plugin and theme. And so be careful of feature bloat. Uh, it's tempting to say, yeah, I'm gonna do this just because it's cool and then accidentally uh, insert a security vulnerability. Some things to deal with to defend against brute force attacks. Check for bad usernames like admin and administrator. Uh, if you're a, uh, if you're if you've got the responsibility for a site. CAPTCHA has the advantage of blocking bots in many cases and has the disadvantage of pissing users off. And some CAPTCHA is not handled or is not as effective against bots as people think. However, CAPTCHA is a valid brute force defense. WordPress now enforces strong passwords. You no longer have to uh, write code to enforce strong passwords for admin. Uh, you can enforce strong passwords for other roles and capabilities within your, uh, within your plugins. Secure password delivery. There's a website, there's, there's several ways to do this. There's a website called onetimesecret.com. Now, the way this works is you could type my password is not open. Maybe that's the password. And then I would create the secret link. Uh, refresh the page. Evidently, I've sat on this thing too long. I had this prepared. So my password is a secret. Okay, then I create a secret link. This, uh, this link will self-destruct <laughs> exactly uh, one time after it's used. And so you can email this, this link and someone will click on it and know the password. Just make sure that that they know that once they click on the link, it's gone. One time secret, like in this case, it expires in seven days. And so even if they, if someone else, even if they click on it, you'll have to share it again. But using a one time secret is a very secure way of delivering passwords over email. Uh, most of the people I work with, I text them the password. Uh, so the, uh, I'll email them the username and the link and send them the password via text message. Just come up with a way of delivering your password securely when you're working on a site. Don't email the passwords themselves. And this is the one time secret that I shared. Okay. Another source of an, uh, of, uh, 
failed integrity are injection attacks. I don't know if you're familiar with this or not. This is a, this is a joke. Uh, it's called Little Bobby Tables. But the idea is that uh, the kid's name was Robert, quote, etc. And this was, th without proper sanitization, typing this into a field could actually destroy the student's table and there would be nothing you could do except for restore from backup. So WordPress fortunately has a lot of built-in injection defenses and best practices for coders are to use your built-in escaping validation and sanitizing functions. Uh, input validation. Validation basically says you check to make sure that it is what it's supposed to be. So let's say we, we have a zip code, we're gonna have just the five digit zip code and we're not gonna do the zip nine. And so we say, okay, is it an integer? And if it's not an integer, blank it out. And if it's longer than five, only take the first five strings. This is an example of validation, and then you might you know, update your database uh, with, with a zip code. Uh, but the point is, in your plugin, make sure that, or theme, make sure that any user input is validated in some way and or sanitized. Sanitizing is when you clean up user input like that little Bobby Tables joke that we, that we ran up uh, above. WordPress has a lot of built-in sanitizing functions. Uh, if you're sending it to a text, sanitized text, all of these sanitizing functions will help you make sure that if it's supposed to be an email, only an email goes in. If it's supposed to be a file name, only valid file name characters go in. If it's supposed to be a key, only valid keys go in. This sanitized text field and the fact that I brought it into a title, uh, I could have used text field. I also could have used sanitized title. I also could have used sanitize meta. The fact that I chose sanitized text field was just generic. I, I was looking for an example, uh, but sanitizing text fields are, are very, uh, that's kind of like a fallback. But if you know what's being saved, you'll want to, uh, you'll want to sanitize what it's supposed to be. And that is, this alone, will knock out 99% of your injection attacks, if not all of them. Escaping is the other side of sanitizing. Uh, why do we escape out output? Well, this is bad code. Somebody could, for example, and this is, this is all together, it's really obvious here, but if someone, if your code echoes back in any way something that came from the user. The user could put in a cross-site script. And, and once this Java script is here, it's got access to the browser, which could set cookies. Uh, this, is, this is how cross-site cross scripting is propagated. So you want to escape your output from any source that you don't trust uh, implicitly. So escaping is securing output. So how do you do it? You use escaping functions. And again, uh, the codex and the developer's reference has a lot of different escaping functions, but 
in general, like if you're just going to send out some, like title has to be HTML because it's inside some HTML tags so you can escape HTML. Uh, an image source has to be a URL so you escape the URL. This tells me that nothing except for valid URL code is getting in there and it looks for stuff. Sometimes you do need to put JavaScript in. So you escape your JavaScript so that it only has safe JavaScript. Same thing with text area, same thing with attributes. Each of these are examples of escaping output that could have come from the database, which could have come from a user and therefore could be used as uh, a cross-site scripting attack. In addition to your program's integrity, you also have uh, the responsibility of looking at your file and data integrity. And that is not necessarily coding, except what happens when it's your, someone else's, someone else's plugin or theme runs the same level as yours, which means that some other plugin can make yours vulnerable. And when that happens, you're going to get the call. Your code is bad. Never mind that your code is the victim and that your code is the victim of somebody else's bad practices. So one of the things that you want to do is, is have some integrity checking. If you use Git for source control, it automatically includes integrity checking, which means that you can compare the file that you suspect is compromised with your master Git repository and you can see immediately if there's been a change. And so if, if part of your code has been subjected to an injection attack, if you use Git for source control, one of the side effects of that is that you get automatic integrity checking. You might wanna consider having a canonical file integrity source, maybe offline on a thumb drive uh, so that you can have something to compare it to. This article right here has a, uh, a way to do this automatically on, a, on another website. That's this article right here. I'm gonna copy this and paste that there. This is not, this is actually very not WordPress specific, but it's, it's a PHP way of checking any script that uh, that may have uh, the potential to have uh, been compromised. So if you're doing a lot of code and you want to protect your code against accusations of problems and you say, no, it wasn't my code, it was someone else's uh, compromised my code, this sort of thing will let you know to, to put your uh, integrity back. But your, your best defense against a compromised uh, code is a, a good uh, source control system. The other thing that you can do, and I don't have any particular ones because I, I do my own uh, file integrity checking, but a lot of the uh, plugins, security plugins have security monitoring and or file integrity monitoring. And some of those are premium, some of those are built in, but if, you, uh, if you're installing or uh, managing a website for uh, a, um, for a client and they want you to secure it quickly and you don't wanna write custom code, uh, this will, uh, monitor your file integrity uh, of your entire site. You've got less control than if you code it yourself, but it's also readily available. Okay, again, uh, before I move on, uh, any questions? We still, still good? Okay, all right, on to the next. On to the next one. 
Okay, availability is basically just says your WordPress site should be available to your customers, users, administrators, and content creators when they need it. And if you're a theme developer or a plugin developer, the last thing you want is to have a problem that makes your site unavailable. And therefore, availability is often a function of integrity. Now, reference our entire integrity uh, previous uh, reference our previous integrity lecture for that. However, uh, most common is is an injection attack could lock users out. For example, uh, it could also be used to destroy the availability of other sites. What prompted that article in 2013 that we talked about was that thousands of compromised WordPress sites were used to make other sites unavailable. Uh, when this happens, you'll need to work with the host in, in most cases. Another factor that impacts availability is performance. If your website is too slow, it is not available. The fact that it's not a result of a hack doesn't mean it's any less uh, a CIA problem. If you use uh, poorly optimized code, your website is not available. So one of the things that you'll want to do with both your theme and your plugins is look at a profile tool with something like, uh, uh, let's say, um, Google. Uh, home like this one right here we'd come up here and we could actually profile with this tool right here in your browser just uh, see what's going on with your uh, your various website loading things and use the profile tool to find out uh, what is keeping your website so slow Caching, uh, again, that's primarily uh, uh, plugins, a lot of plugins that use caching, but caching can impact performance. And on particularly busy sites, asset management using a CDN, which is a content delivery network, can also uh, help lighten the load and improve performance. Okay, some CIA resources, uh, resources that will help you uh, with your um, with your uh, confidentiality, integrity, and access. Check out developer.wordpress.org. Know it. Um, your codex, again, know it. That's going to be where you're going to find a lot of information about sanitizing your input, escaping your output. Another site that you should be familiar with is the Open Web Application Security Project, also known as OWASP, uh, OWASP.org. Uh, be aware of it. Uh, if you're interested in cross-site scripting attacks, which you should be, uh, you can get a lot of information from XS, XSS. Dot com. Something that a lot, I'm surprised at how many people don't know about is CERT, which is uh, United States Homeland Security's Computer Emergency Response Readiness Team. They, I, I subscribe to their security alerts, and you get email alerts on any cybersecurity threats. And you could filter your inbox by sender if it's from uscert.gov and the keyword WordPress. And WordPress and WordPress plugins, uh, you'll know immediately if someone has reported uh, a security vulnerability either in WordPress core or in a WordPress plugin and what the fix is. All right, that, uh, that wraps up the, uh, the lecture. Uh, at this point, are there any questions? I'll put some some more links in the chat. No, nope, no more questions.
any all right i'm gonna i'm gonna put a link to this uh, I'm going to put a link to this uh, doc in. Oh, awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, the, uh, the chat window says no questions, and it was very helpful. So uh, like I said, I'm going, to, I'm going to put a link to this doc. I don't know if this is the – I'm going to run it back to the beginning so that it starts on, on line one. I'm not sure where the – but here's a link to the slideshow in case you, uh, in case you want to bookmark that. And I think that's all the, well, that link has the links to all the others. If you don't have any questions, uh, I'd like to take this time to thank you and uh, have a great day and maintain your confidentiality, integrity, and availability. <laughs> Take care.